Alright, here's my new Prismatic Warlock build using a Solacism Exotic Class Item Bond, which I will get into. The build is heavily focused on the two exotics that I'm using here. Um, and I use this build, uh, well I came up with the build essentially after running the Light Blade on Grandmaster difficulty. No mic LFG runs, About uh, I ran it at least 30 times this week farming uh, rake angles and just enjoying myself uh, on my favorite strike and uh, farming some double rewards, maxing out my ascendant alloys and prisms and buying class items every couple runs. Uh, so it was a good time. Um, if you look here in my vault, you can see how I organized uh, like a complete nerd. Some of the rake angles that I got here, uh, I did delete quite a few, but you know I had enough to fill up a page, so I figured I'd, uh, I'd stow it in my vault and, uh, and show that off here. Um, chill clip was the least frequent perk that I got, ironically enough, even though that's what I was farming for. But I basically got a chill clip roll with every single uh, third column perk. Uh, including impulse amplifier, which would be like the one in 400 chance or whatever. Um, although maybe because we're, we have double perks in the third column, uh, that eliminates the weight gate issue. But still, the first perk is impulse with chill clip. So if you just rolled this on a non-adept rake angle, this would be a one in 400 and something odd chance of, of happening. And I, I do think impulse amplifier is probably... Um, not talked about quite enough with chill clip. Um, I think just uh, for basic general use of a glaive where um, you know, you're not relying on having to pick up ammo to overflow it or holding your guard up very awkwardly to just tank damage instead of killing things. Uh, those are, you know, impulse amplifier is gonna be your most uh, generically good uh, reload perk and also uh, you know you get that additional velocity right there's a reason why impulse amplifier is so good on on indebted kindness as the rocket sidearm you get very snappy reload and fast velocity right uh, but basically I got every combination and then um, I mostly got swashbucklers and vorpals I got like three times as many vorpals and swashbucklers as I did chill clips uh, you know I think that's just RNG. I don't think this is uh, anything involving uh, any kind of weight gating. Like, I don't think I was weight gated against getting chill clip at all. Uh, I just happen to have bad RNG uh, for getting chill clip in my 30 plus runs this week, right? Uh, so, what's the build that I'm using here? Um, so, it revolves around Thorn. Uh, I mean, you could use Osteostriga here, but basically, I'm making Poisonous Thorn have. Uh, well, here, I wrote a little poem. Poisonous Thorn gets overcharged with severing radiant rounds that spread shatter and unravel and spawn threadling loaded tangles, right? I mean, that's a mouthful. I'm sure you're going to remember every word of it, but yeah, it's doing a lot basically, right? And no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a poet. So sorry, it's, uh, you know, sorry for the, the poor poetry there, but, um, but yeah, we're, we're making Thorn do a lot of stuff. I'm also using the uh, AOE DOT Ability Regenerator VS Velocity Baton uh, that bursts huge litters of orbs, buffing build crafting and weapons while disrupting and weakening and dealing overcharged damage that can even break barriers. There's my next poem, right? So I wrote a poem for each one of these weapons. Um, and then I got the Emergency Get Out of Jail Free perk eager edge on a cold steel slammer which allows for dramatic changes in positioning from dangerous to safe while bursting down champs and spreading shatter right so there's three poems for three weapons hope you enjoyed that um but yeah the exotic class item that i'm using here um is necrotics of course and spirit of the swarm 
Now you may have seen in some of my previous videos, I've put up some uh, Spirit of the Necrotic with Spirit of Synthos uh, builds. There's a lot of different ways that you could build into Necrotics and Synthos and melee builds on Warlock. You've got the uh, Arcane Needle, which you have many charges of, which is easy access to Radiant from range, which pairs perfectly with uh, with weapons of sorrow especially but even if you don't want to use a weapon of sorrow you can still regularly spread poison and get yourself radiant uh, you can use a glaive and you can also use the lightning surge build uh, which would really favor synthos more so than um, necrotics i mean necrotics is definitely helping out there but um, i have been looking for a necrotics claw roll because i was thinking uh, and you know, previously when I was building with Necrotic and Synthos, is there's not it's not always preferable to use a lightning surge build, and sometimes you just kind of want to sit back and make your uh, make your Thorn do all the damage or Osteostriga and just have that go to town. Um, and you know, it's not always safe to get up there and do a lightning surge. It's not like Consecration where you can uh, you know you slam you you raise yourself up into the air and slam down uh, and you emit a wave uh, of damage forward uh, with lightning surge you are the damage being being thrown forward like you are the projectile going into the pack of enemies so you're much more likely to die in a gm doing a lightning surge as opposed to a consecration you have to be uh, with consecration you can play at a safer distance right it's similar play style but it's definitely much more risky on uh, lightning surge especially without like knockout for immediate healing you of course you can use devour um, uh, and you can get immediate healing from devour but I'm not actually using devour uh, in this build so yeah I haven't been able to land the necrotic claw uh, exotic bond yet and you know, it's when you really think about it, do you really need four arcane needles? Is that going to be a game changer compared to three arcane needles? Not really, right? It's just more so replacing synthos, which you're not going to be using anyway. So it's kind of a nice bonus. But then I realized that, you know, I've got this swarm, um, I've got this swarm necrotic combo here. Uh, and when you think of it, right what good are tangles on prismatic anyways right like they're so valuable on the strand core subclasses like on broodweaver you can get wanderer tangles you can make them spawn threadlings uh, on titan you can make them give you woven mail and uh <clears throat> you know so there's on on hunter you can turn them into bay blades the whirling maelstrom right there's nothing on prismatic that really makes good use of tangles other than just a plain old tangled detonation right shoot it or pick it up and throw it at an enemy and that's that just a little bit of bonus damage um but uh if you if you use swarmers you're actually giving yourself threadlings and when you pair that and yes spirit of the swarm doesn't uh add the unravel like the core swarmers exotic does it literally only spawns threadlings um actually let's read it here right uh destroying a, st a tangle spawns threadlings right i mean that, that's that i thought it was going to be more complicated than that it's really not um <clears throat> the threadlings don't unravel but it's still you still get threadlings right um and so if you're using arcane needle you're naturally going to be unraveling all kinds of enemies you kill enemies the unravel spreads tangles are going to be spawning basically every 10 seconds right as whatever the cooldown is you can spawn them that often um, also if you use like facet of solitude which i'm doing here uh, then when you land rapid precision hits which is very easy and favorable to do with thorn anyways and in a grandmaster also desirable to get that 40 percent damage resistance from key targets but when you do that severing blast uh, when the enemy dies uh, they will also spawn a threat uh, a tangle right so this build is uh, is basically making it so that all of my tangles are now uh, loaded with hatchlings right and so this is very good in a movement based grandmaster where you don't have time to focus every single enemy and multitask um, so you can have your your threadlings running around doing work right 
way that you could look at it is as opposed to using just necrotic grips on on warlock you can have better necrotic grips right because you're really not losing anything spirit of the necrotic versus the regular necrotic grips i think like you get airborne effectiveness with the gloves right so it's like maybe that's good for pvp it's not really anything that changes the game on pve you have all of what you need out of spirit of necrotic it does your melees deal poison damage your glaive deals poison damage your weapons of sorrow uh, are going to do additional poison damage um, right and so now you can just make it so that you have ne necrotic grips with hatchling right it's like giving your thorn the hatchling perk right because you're always going to be uh adding in uh, arcane needles while you're you, while you're doing your thorn gameplay you're going to be severing enemies creating tangles automatically detonating them through the spread of poison uh and just you know naturally shooting the enemy and where the enemy just died uh so yeah it's like giving uh it's like giving thorn hatchling so pretty cool um yeah, so I'll go into the aspects and fragments and stuff, but a little bit more on VS Velocity Baton. Um, this is the standard god roll, and uh, by the way, if, you, if you've been following my channel, uh, I thought I was the first person to post this uh, quote-unquote god roll on YouTube. Uh, I, this was literally the first drop that I got from Vesper's Host from the dungeon. And, um, yeah, I... I when I got it, I went and tested it, and I realized it was just shitting out orbs like absolutely crazy. So I put up a video about it, and I figured that I had to have been like the only person. It was like two two days into the dungeon. Um, so then I decided to look it up on YouTube to see if anybody else had, and somebody had. Um, I don't know how to pronounce their name, but I'm subscribed to them. It's D U Q K. Uh, I guess I'll link it in the description or pinned comments. But they had also done a video with the exact same role, uh, basically discussing the same thing as me, right? So I think I was the second person on YouTube uh, to figure that out, and uh, not that I'm like trying to claim ownership over uh, figuring out something very basic that I'm sure every player was going to figure out inevitably anyways but now literally every other content creator has uh, came forward and proclaimed this uh this combination to be the god roll so that makes me feel a little bit justified uh in my original analysis of the grenade launcher and so i really got to put it to use here in the light blade it's really good to complement thorn uh, you get your weakening from the seasonal artifact and uh, which means that you don't have to run like uh, facet of defiance to apply weaken on your transcendent grenades um, you can just use the grenade launcher it does damage over time uh, block off areas you can just uh, farm orbs of power and super energy off of uh, and light transcendence energy at the same time um, off of ala cool and bigger enemies so uh, yeah it definitely complements the build well it's also surging from void and if you want you can make sure that in the seasonal artifact you don't have overload grenade launcher that way uh, you will just make the grenade launcher surge because it's void so you'll still get the 25 percent extra damage but you also be able to uh, get radiant uh, to have it working with anti-barrier because you'll notice here i'm not using any unstoppable or barrier weapon um, I am basically getting Radiant to break barriers from my uh, many arcane needles with Facet of Dawn, right? And the seasonal artifact here. And then I'm using... Um, for unstops, I can use um, I can use my Bleak Watcher turret, right? So I can freeze unstops and then shatter them. Mind you, there's only like three unstops in the entire Nightfall, and they're not usually a threat. You can take them out from long range, uh, but still. And I also have Cold Steel on my Slammer, right? So that's another way that I could take care of unstops. But yeah, as long as I can get Radiant, then I can easily take care of barriers. The damage over time from Velocity Baton will break the barriers. Uh, and then I could just charge in there with a full vortex heavy swing for uh, a ton of burst damage and break their shields that way because you have to be mindful of course that with uh, facet of dawn and uh, prismatic melees you only get five to six seconds of radiant max at a time right um, so you need to be like throwing those needles out and then capitalizing on that short window of time that you have uh, with radiant right um, so that's 
basically it for the for the concept there. As far as the abilities, I went with uh, Nova Bomb here so that I can get Void Overshields with Facet of Purpose, because right, another huge bonus to VS Velocity Baton with Attrition Orbs is it's just spewing out orbs all over the place. You may as well uh, build into survivability with your fragments here and get Void Overshields. Uh, of course, you can also use like Song of Flame, which I think Song of Flame is probably generally a better super for the boss room specifically, and even the swamp. You can get through the swamp with Song of Flame uh, if you need to in a pinch. Uh, but I, because I'm using a sword, I wanted a ranged burst damage option. So Nova Bomb uh, allows me to basically annihilate uh, the barriers um, as needed, and then I could just rely on my sword to get away. Uh, from dangerous situations instead of just pop you know doing a panic super to uh, you know to sustain myself through a, a risky situation where I would otherwise die right instead I have a sword that can get me out and I have a ranged super to do big damage right uh, so that's the trade-off there and I get void over shields which I think is preferable to getting restoration anyways because I'm running recuperation on my legs so that's not really a huge factor I'd rather have an overshield especially because overshields have been buffed uh, I'm using facet of hope here because I'm constantly gonna have void over shields um, then I can get my Phoenix dive back faster to spawn more th uh, threadlings right um, now one thing I didn't notice and I, it's not that you need to use Weaver's Call just because you're building into uh, Necrotic Swarmers here, right? You're not enhancing your Threadlings with Prismatic. It's just a bonus that you can get Threadlings. Uh, but one thing that Weaver's Call says here is targets defeated by Strand Damage have a chance to, to generate a perched Threadling, right? So that means that when my Swarmers Threadlings from my Tangles do damage, I can generate perched Threadlings, which will then circulate my character and then it will uh, you know what you do with perch threadlings you shoot an enemy your threadling like you all of a sudden have a new threadling right so it's just it's giving me more threadlings because I'm using swarmers basically right um, and obviously there's some trade-offs here like you don't like I'm not using feed the void uh, I'm not using lightning surge despite this being a necrotic build uh, instead I'm just relying on thorn and it plays very well because like I said lightning surge is a bit dangerous I know because I tested it with my necrotic synthos build I died way too many times uh, it's safer to just throw a bleak watcher out where you need it do crowd control and then you can have your threadlings running around uh, passively doing damage from weavers call and swarmers um, and uh, that's just going to allow you to focus key targets like the barriers and the light barriers and uh, and evade Alakul uh, while still being able to put damage uh, passively downrange, right? Um, this op also opens up extra fragment slots, which is nice. The thing with Feed the Void on uh, in GMs, especially in a fire team, this is a different case if you're solo. It's a different case in, if you're in an ad dense dungeon, especially solo. Uh, you're not going to have this random no mic LFG fire team member that's like a consecration titan constantly stealing your kills uh, and when you only have devour for so many seconds and have to refresh it on kill you really have to be independent about your gameplay and uh, managing your devour and sometimes when you're in a fire team it's just easier uh, to go without right so I wasn't going to use devour to build into hope or anything like that because it's not very reliable um, also you need an ability kill to get devour right unless we're using buried bloodline uh, and it's not always practical to get an ability kill right especially when you're using bleak watcher turrets and just arcane needles right the arcane needle is more for spreading unravel and poison uh, and enhancing your radiant weapon it's not necessarily for getting kills outright so yeah you're not gonna you can try out feed the void but I I'm willing to bet that you're not gonna see it up very often on uh, in your buffs right uh, so this is so weavers call and bleak watcher give me a lot of dark damage as well by the way Thorn is giving me both, and Via's Velocity Baton is giving me an absolute ton of light energy, right? The grenade launcher itself is enough to fully 
fill up your light bar without the help of anything else from your abilities, right? So having your abilities go towards uh, the synergy with uh, Strand, with Threadlings, and, and Shatter, with Bleak Watcher, which of course, by the way, plays into the Seasonal Artifact with all the Shatter and, and, and all that stuff. So your abilities are going to be uh, are going to be supplementing your dark energy. You're going to be popping transcendence uh, very frequently, right? And as you can see here, I'm obviously using Facet of Ruin to increase shatter damage as well. Um, and like I said, with uh, Solitude, right? Uh, I think Facet of Solitude is one of the best um, fragments in the game, but I don't always have a spot available for it because there's more critical. Uh, fragments to use especially when you only have five slots but because we have six here and because we're using thorn as our bread and butter add clear weapon and even for big damage passively over time thorn is doing you know substantial uh, amount of damage uh, you're always going to be proccing solitude with a weapon like thorn right so you're just enhancing thorn that much more but that's basically it for the build so now I will show you some gameplay and talk about that a little bit. I just loaded into a solo master uh, light blade here just to get some gameplay. Um, you know, I got tons of GM footage, but I just didn't have time to go through uh, hours worth of footage and pick out clips. So I figured if I could do this solo on master and get some decent uh, demonstrations here going, uh, trust me when I say if you can do this solo on master or even expert for that, for that matter, uh, you could definitely do this in grandmaster. Uh, solo I would even go so far as to say but uh, definitely in a fire team right if you could solo anything on master you can do it in a fire team on GM uh, but basically the difficulty between the two is hardly even noticeable um, but yeah so look the point of the build here is you get your bleak watchers out for crowd control it's also going to be doing uh, passive dark damage right um, as are your threadlings, so just make sure that you're phoenix diving as much as possible. Uh, throwing out those arcane needles, generally I like to try and save one arcane needle uh, fully charged because the way it works with strand melees is you build up, uh, you, your um, ability regen is actually accelerated if you already have like one or two uh, melees charged up, right? If you're completely depleted, then you're gonna end up waiting uh, disproportionately longer time for your needles um, or at least for that first initial needle until it, until the uh, ability regen accelerates beyond that right um, but yeah you want to get your bleak watchers out spam your phoenix dive the threadlings are going to be moving about uh, get those arcane needles for unravel right when you kill unraveled enemies the unravel spreads to other enemies so basically your entire ability game here and with your fragment setup and all that is building your dark uh, transcendence energy automatically and then to get your light transcendence all you got to do is uh, is play into uh, vs velocity baton naturally which is just spamming it in between uh, thorn uh, to get off the, the debuff to produce orbs of power so that you can pick up those orbs and get a void overshield um, And build up your armor charge if you need to do finishers on enemies I'm running special finishers so I can always get special ammo whenever I need um, The strategy here for taking out barriers because remember we don't have any barrier weapons, right? So we need to rely on our three needle charges and ideally we need to rely on transcendence so especially for like the boss room I always save up my uh, transcendence energy uh, for the barrier spawns, right? As long as you know when they spawn, you can save your transcendence. Um, and then that way you know that you're going to have essentially permanent uptime on Radiant as long as you're actively spamming your needles, which you'll just, you know, replenish automatically. Um, look, I just took the light bear out of its super by slowing and freezing it, right? Slow and freeze has the same effect as suppression. and. Uh, I mean, unironically, they both take care of overload champions through disruption, right? So you, just like a light bearer can take you out of your super with their suppressor grenade, you can take a light bearer out of their super with a suppressor grenade or with slow and freeze, right? Um, so if you do get caught right next to a light bearer that's popping its super, don't be afraid to use uh, the slammer with cold steel. Um, and you certainly want to proactively get your bleak watchers out whenever there are light bearers nearby right um, But yeah, look at all the orbs everywhere from velocity baton absolutely crazy um, but yeah, and as uh, Also on the note of the barriers um, if you can't uh, 
if you can't get close to a barrier to take it out, just use your Nova Bomb, right? Your Nova Bomb is there for immediate burst damage from essentially any range, where a Slammer is going to help you out close range. But that's basically it for the build. Um, let me know what you think. I'll talk to you in the next one. Take care.